Mr. Secretary General, Excellencies, Honorable Ministers of the Cabinet and members of the National Assembly, members of the Diplomatic Corps, distinguished guests, my fellow Belizeans, please accept a heartfelt welcome to ministers and distinguished guests from our fellow Caribbean states who are here to take part in this extraordinary session of the Standing Committee of Ministers responsible for foreign affairs. We see some familiar faces of good friends among you. For some of you, this is not your first visit to Belize. For others, it is. You are all welcome. Apart from attending the scheduled meetings, you will have the opportunity to meet and talk with a cross-section of our Belizean people. This will give them an opportunity to personally thank all of you for the effective work you have done to help Belize reach this important milestone on the road to a secure independence with all our territory. Yesterday, a release was issued simultaneously in Belmopan, London, and Guatemala City, setting out the heads of agreement reached at the talks just ended between the United Kingdom and Guatemalan governments over the country of Belize. Copies of the heads of agreement have been circulated to delegates and are being given wide publicity among our people. As I signed the agreement in London on behalf of the government of Belize, I was very conscious of the fact that without your solid support, it would have been impossible to have reached this far in attaining our just objectives. This support has been given by your governments and people wholeheartedly, the United Nations and the Organization of American States at the conferences of the non-aligned countries and elsewhere. Fortified by the knowledge that you were at those international forums championing our just cause, give us the determination and courage to keep going to keep struggling for our freedom. It is therefore in a spirit of deep gratitude that I say to you today that the agreement signed in London on March 11 will provide a framework within which the Anglo-Guatemalan dispute over Belize may be honorably and finally settled. It is therefore in a spirit of deep gratitude that I say to you today that the agreement signed in London on March 11 will provide a framework within which the Anglo-Guatemalan dispute over Belize may be honorably and finally settled. It is an inspiration for Belizeans to press forward to ultimate victory, and I hope a similar inspiration for you to note what the small nations of the Caribbean community have and can achieve in a unified and cooperative effort. The agreement is not a full and final settlement of the dispute. There is a lot of hard work still ahead of us. In this respect, we will be consulting with you to get your valid counsel and support in the days and months ahead as we work out the details of a final treaty or treaties. There are hard and difficult issues still remaining to be negotiated. Nevertheless, the important thing, as we told the Belizean people in our report to the nation, is that by the present agreement, Belize can proceed to independence and Guatemala will accept and respect the independent state of Belize with its traditional boundaries, without quarrel and without war. It is gratifying to note that together, we have been able to protect all the basic and fundamental rights of the Belizean people. Our meeting here in Balmopan comes at a time when world attention, as never before, is focused on Belize as a test case in finding a peaceful and honorable solution to an ancient territorial dispute. It comes at a time when the whole region has come under close scrutiny of the world. An independent Belize will enter the region with much to offer our neighbors who are plagued with internal problems. It is our hope and prayer that our emergence as a new nation in the Caribbean basin will help to bring stability and social justice to our troubled corner of the world. Future historians no doubt will interpret the decades of the 70s and the 80s of the 20th century as a vibrant period of national and international transformation. In the 50s and 60s, there was a formation of regional groups all over the world. In our Western Hemisphere, the Caribbean community 
in the Central American common market came to life and became internationally viable. The beginning was good. Many sound and substantial developments marked real progress towards cooperation and regional community life. As time went on, the structures left by centuries and colonialism could not in every section and angle withstand the pressures of modern capitalism and socialism, which blow with the winds of change. Inevitable strains and stresses have resulted and now we face together the challenges of transformation on every level. The period in which we live can be a blessing or a curse. Whatever happens, let us make it a blessing for all our people. All is not lost. Let us continue to build on the solid structures we have cast, trim our seals to the winds that blow and advance to a better future. To this end, we must not withdraw to what appears safe and untroubled isolation. We have a duty to the region to work together for the common good and to effectively safeguard freedom in the midst of political pluralism. We have a duty to the region to promote justice and equality in a truly participatory society so that applying rightly the power of science and technology, we create resources for all to share and thus rescue humanity from underdevelopment. There are objectives that loom before us. Let us go forward with prayer that the God of the universe, almighty and eternal, bless our work and guide us by his counsel and fortitude. May we have a good and fruitful conference.